um, it's just been a really, really long day. I'm joined with Paul Gravitt, who's going to be giving evidence tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear a lot of noise in the background. For some reason, Patrick's shouting. Um, <laughs> Paul, what do you think of Robin Lane's evidence today? I thought he was. I thought he was excellent. He did really well mm. under quite demanding conditions. Mm. You know, yeah. He uh, was on for a very long time. He was asked a lot of detailed questions covering a huge amount of time and different circumstances. You know, he 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 he, he did well. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, it, there was quite wide-ranging ranging questioning. I mean, obviously, mm. given that you know Robin's been involved in the animal rights movement for a very long time, mm. um, it pretty much covered the entirety of the trans era that we, we're looking at, which was, I mean, it went a bit longer than it. Um, mm. As you pointed out to me, it, it, the trans just relates to when the undercover cop was deployed, not mm. the whole time that they were. Yeah. So, so yes, it, it went into, it, it through to, to the late 90s. Um, he was targeted by quite a lot of undercover officers. Um, was most notably, I guess, really from the early years, Mike Titty. Um, he was, he was um, there's reports on him by Bob Lambert. Yeah. Then later on, he was targeted by uh, Andy Coles, by Matt, by HM1, who used to cover name Matt Rayner, yeah. and cover name uh, Christine Green as well. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm still quite struck what I've got in my head. It's just those last things he said right at the very end about the way that it affected his life. Uh, mm. I, I think all of us echo those, really. And, and the, the difficulty people have of like uh, making new friends after that kind of experience. Yeah. He's one of the most targeted people by undercover cops that we've heard from. Um, yeah. it, it was very affecting, wasn't it, really, his evidence? It was. Um, and when he said that at the end, it, it affected me. I, I could share some of mm. some of those feelings he'd mm. had, you know. Uh, I've known Robin a very long time, um, <laughs> since the 80s. Know. And we've been close, you know. Mm. Um, he's a genuine person. And... Mm. Uh, you know, but I obviously because I no longer I've not lived in London for a long time. I haven't seen as much of him maybe, mm. and uh, I didn't realise how much it had affected him personally. So to hear him say that, I found very I found very moving mm. actually, very mm. moving. You know, to hear him. and also his, his honesty at, at, at admitting it too, mm. doing you know the effect he has had. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It was a, a very honest. Um, I mean, like he was, uh, obviously he was honest throughout. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, we, we heard a lot. There was a lot of questioning <laughs> about. Um, I mean, one of the things I found, found interesting, and he was. Um, they found they, you know, they they they, they thought he's a man who, who's known for a lot, been around a bit, mm. you know, uh, you get close to him. Mm. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Of like of the five undercover officers who targeted him, uh, like directly. Um, Three of them, it, 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 it's, it's quite clear that they didn't just, ta like, as we know from so many of the undercover officers, they didn't just target him, like, professionally, as we put it, mm. in, in his activism, but rather through his personal life. Mm. Um, you're starting with, with Mike Chitty, who, you know, from what he said, you know, was, was yeah, his, his partner was friends with the, the woman who Mike Chitty was deceiving yeah. into a relationship. Yeah. So the four of them were socialised a lot together. I mean, he talked about um, you know, Matt Rayner, someone he considered a good friend, but particularly Christine Green, someone he thought mm. you genuinely had a closeness with. Mm. Um, and it, it's these relationships really which like it's not just they were sending undercover officers into to like spy on a campaign group it was they were sending them really into people's actual lives and i think that's really the basis of why it's so affecting for people right because yeah. these are people you really trust you yeah. it goes beyond any sort of like professional it's not just they were in meetings or something you know yeah. I mean? they were really part of, of his life yeah i mean I, I can remember when i was uh had had matt rayner obviously suspecting him uh of being of being an undercover but didn't yet have proof. Mm. Um, and I remember mentioning, I think I was trying to find out, to Robin, I think I was trying to find out if Robin knew his mm. date of birth. And I remember when, when, you know, telling Robin, and he sort of went quiet and for a moment or two, and he, and he said, oh dear, he said, oh, I really do hope that Matt Rayner wasn't a spy, mm. you know, because we got on, got on so well, he was a real friend. So, so it must, like you said, have been devastating mm. to describe someone that close to you mm. um, yeah. who betrayed you, basically. Mm. Mm. And for Christine Green as well. I mean, Christine was somebody, yeah. obviously, I knew for Animal Rights London Animal Action, but I wouldn't say I got really close to her. Mm. She wasn't an easy person in some respects. Uh, she, uh, obviously, because she was based in South London like Robin, she saw a lot more of him, and they mm. did become close friends. So, yeah, he's... Uh, yeah. He must feel, you know, 
as I said, betrayed in, mm. in a number of respects by the by, by the by the spies, the UCOs, over a very long time frame, mm. a very long period of time. Mm. Well, one of the things that was covered quite a bit in the questioning today, I mean, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't relate to any of the undercover deployments, but I was really struck with something that Albert Deal said yesterday about some of the worst experiences he had with the police weren't undercover police, it was overt policing. Mm. And I, I mean, I'm really drawn to, um, we talked a lot about uh, the, the conviction that Robin got for conspiracy to commit to incite criminal damage, um, which came from just literally from publishing a, a newsletter um, which detailed uh, uh, animal rights actions that had taken place in the past. And mm. he was successfully convicted because the judge was convinced that by reporting on things that happened in the past, he supposedly encouraged people to do actions in the future. Um, and there's a lot to be said that, you know, we, we talk about the, the spy cops as being like just a, one little glimpse of the wider infrastructure of repression that exists mm -hmm. in this country. And really, and like, we talked about like the, the, the raid on his home, the, the months of, of worry about the mm -hmm. case, then, then the, 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 the sentencing and the imprisonment for all that time. But, you know, actually, it's, it's not just undercover cops that, me that mess up the lives of activists. And that, you know, part of the reason why um, a lot of people, a lot of the sort of liberal criticisms of, of, of the spy cops are so irritating to us is because a lot of people don't really recognize yeah. how authoritarian and repressive policing is generally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, t I totally agree there. Um, ordinary, you know, you might say ordinary intelligence led policing mm. um, is just as oppressive. Mm. Um, and it was used in news. A lot against people like like Robin, act, you know, people activists, and um, who, who believe who believe it just believe in animal rights and animal liberation, um, that, that animals shouldn't be used in, and abused for, for profit. So uh, he, he found himself the target just because, like you say, he wanted to report on actions that the ILF had carried out, um, and he, he was sentenced to, to incitement. And, um, but the good, I mean, the, the good thing to take away from that is that it didn't deter him from coming back <laughs> and carrying on. You mm. know, he, he did. You know, he said, as, he, as, he, as he said, he, he didn't want to get arrested again. Mm. He wanted to just do more straightforward campaigning, mm. which he did. And of course, the, the spies, the, uh, the UCOs, d didn't mind that. They still carried on with mm. it. You know, and that's what they were like. Uh, mm. But it didn't deter him. And also, what he didn't get time to mention was because was that he later became. Yeah a great trailblazer for, ve for promoting veganism mm. uh, through him and uh, his wife Alison setting up the London Vegan Festivals and, uh, and also with anim London Animal Action towards the, the end of that group's uh, lifespan we started organising vegan fairs and things like that uh, when vegan campaigning came a bit to the fore and what's interesting about that is Vegan campaigning began, began emerging amongst activists, grassroots activists, as a way, as a way of kind of avoiding that state oppression mm. that you were talking mm. about. Mm. I can always remember an activist who, who was met, mentioned by Robin, a, a, a lovely guy called Neil Lee, who's now sadly dead, who was one of the absolute trailblazers for mm. vegan campaigning, and uh, saying saying at a meeting. Yeah, it's really, it's really refreshing to be doing something you believe in and you know that the cops aren't going to come and smash your door in in the mm. middle of the night and mm. arrest you for it. Mm. So, yeah, um, so uh, yeah, good, good on Robin. He, he gave a great performance and, uh, uh, yeah, and I, I hope other people are, in, are involved as well will. So. Yeah, absolutely. Just on that vegan fair stuff, I mean, I think you, uh, we, uh, they really shouldn't be underestimated. I mean, like, back in, like, sort of, I guess the mid-2000s, I got involved with the East South Vegan Wales vegan fairs, <laughs> and we were doing those really regularly, um, you know, yeah. uh, all I mean, as well as the, the, the East South Vegan Wales Guide, which was, you know, before the days of the internet, believe it or not, we used to produce lists of places you get yeah. soy milk. It was, it, was oh yeah. it was kind of important <laughs> for the time. But yeah. like, you know, I, mean, I remember really, we, we rode that train into the mainstream, right? I mm. mean, and, 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 and the, the daddy of that was the London Vegan uh, Festival, you know, yeah. which, which I mean, really like, you know, somebody said, oh, does that still go on? I was like, mate, just go to Tesco's. You, yeah. can, find, you can find all the things to get there now, you yeah. know? And what you, what's difficult to believe now is, is that prior to the late nineties, when the vegan mm. festival began, people who were organizing events that were vegan mm. used to say avoid 
the B word before mm. beacon in them. Yeah. They'd say things like, it's a cruelty-free fair, mm. yeah. and things like because they thought, oh, saying vegan will put people mm. off. So obviously what, 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 what Robin did was really taking a bit of a risk. Mm. Um, but as I say, there was also a sort of feeling in the air, a sort of movement going on that this was the way to go. Mm. And, uh, it was, and it was part of this broader move towards campaigning around veganism. Uh, as, as, as an animal rights and, uh, and, and, and health and environmental issue. Mm. And that's where the genesis really of what we have today. It didn't start like some of the so-called vegan influencers claim, like mm. 2015 or something mm. like that. It goes back a lot, lot mm. further. Mm. And, uh, and some of the people like, you know, Neil Lee and others aren't around anymore, but, you know, it's good to remember them. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, mean, I think, um, just going back to what you were saying there about, like, it didn't matter that Robin Lee had, had, had like, moved away from ALF-related uh, work. He, he was still going to be tailed by the undercover cops because, basically, once they've opened a file on you, it only closes when you die. <laughs> you know, I mean, that seems to be the way it works. Yeah. And if, if they, and I mean, some of the terrible lies that were written about, I mean, a lot of those, mm. uh, there's a lot of stuff that's been covered on restriction order uh, at this mm. uh, hearing. There's a lot of things we can't talk about. But I mean, I think it, it's, it's fair enough to say there were a tremendously large amount of lies about Robin in a lot of his um, uh, reports about him. And I mean, he, he, and he was repeatedly, it was irritatingly, constantly repeated this, repeatedly questioned about his commitment to nonviolence, mm. which if anybody knows anything about Robin uh, Lane's like, politics and his background in pacifism, I mean, it's, it w it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous yeah. to suggest that he would ever be involved in anything violent. But I mean, this was just kept coming back again and again. Um, yeah. It was quite yeah. tiresome. Yeah, it was. He had to keep saying it over and over again, mm. didn't he, uh, Robin? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've known him a long time and he is a... Uh, He's definitely someone who's committed to nonviolence. Mm. But what's, <coughs> but what's also, um, what's also interesting, obviously, with Robin is that it shows you, doesn't it, that someone who's committed to nonviolence. It's a long, long time coming, Tom, and uh, I am looking forward to it. And uh, you know, a little bit of worse, I suppose, but mm. that's understandable. Probably no mm. bad thing. So mm. uh, I'll try and get a good night's sleep and uh, wake up refreshed and come here and just say what I've got to say. Mm. Looking yeah, forward to it. Thanks, no, Tom. No worries. Right, me and Paul have got our eight points now, so he's got a massive <laughs> hangover for us tomorrow. No, we're not going to do that. Um, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, Paul will be giving evidence. I'll be, be reporting on it. I'll be doing some live tweets uh, whilst he's, he's talking. In the breaks, I'll be doing uh, reaction videos. Uh, watch out for all of those. I'll do a um, Twitter Spaces tonight at half past seven, discussing everything that Robin Lane was talking about today. It'd be great if you were there. Cheers for watching. Bye. Bye.